Welcome to part two of this video. In this portion, we will focus on fluid to fluid style heat exchangers, starting with the braze plate design. These heat exchangers are primarily used for refrigerant evaporating purposes with air cooled scroll chillers, and on a smaller scale, used for heat recovery with several air cooled products. As you can see in the animation, this heat exchanger is composed of multiple stainless steel plates with each turned 180 degrees from the plate next to it, and all braced together at the edges. This design creates two independent and highly turbulent fluid channels with a relatively high amount of surface area. Used as an evaporator, this allows for maximum heat transfer between the facility's chilled water loop and the chiller's refrigerant loop. The brace plate design has become popular because of its compact design and high efficiency, which can match what a shell and tube design can offer. Additionally, its small size reduces equipment weight by as much as 10 to 15 percent, which can be critical to keeping facility structural and installation costs to a minimum. And lastly, this design is typically a more economical option than the shell and tube design, which can be a critical purchasing consideration on smaller chillers for budget or value-based customers. Regarding maintenance, there are no regular requirements, as these heat exchangers are used in a closed loop. However, since braze plate heat exchangers are inherently not accessible for cleaning due to their design, it's important that a strainer be installed upstream to protect against the for heat exchanger clogging or freezing. Meaning, in new facilities, there could be dirt or debris in the chilled water loop from building construction, or in older buildings, pipes could be eroding, causing material buildup. There are several non-chiller related scenarios to protect against. Additionally, Note that if a chilled water pump package is included with the York chiller order, a factory installed serviceable Y strainer supplied as standard. Next, we have three shell and tube heat exchanger designs that are used with York chillers. Let's start with a flooded design. These have been used in our industry for decades. They're very versatile and primarily used for refrigerant evaporation, condensing, and heat recovery with water cooled chillers. They are composed of copper tubes held in place with steel supports and a steel wrapper also known as the shell. With this design, chilled water flows through the tubes and refrigerant floods inside the shell covering the tubes. And as refrigerant passes over the tubes, heat energy is pulled away from the chilled water and into the refrigerant cycle, causing the refrigerant to change state from a liquid to a gas, and causing the chilled liquid to get colder, which is then sent back to the facility for useful purposes. And the main reasons why this design has been a standard in the chiller industry for so long are its high efficiency, which is critical for most value and life cycle based customers, and its high application flexibility, meaning it can operate over a wide range of lift and low conditions for both heating and cooling duties. This design is relatively simple as stated, but keep in mind there are several ways the York design has differentiated itself to become the industry benchmark, such as utilizing skip in tubes as a standard to maximize chiller efficiency and longevity. In other words, skip-in tubes are twice as thick at the tube supports for strength as they are between the supports for maximum heat transfer. Or York has modified the flooded design into a double bundle condenser, which can recover and reuse heat that would otherwise be rejected to the atmosphere. Flooded designs allow for multiple pass options, typically 1, 2, and 3 as shown, to meet mechanical room design requirements and chiller load and lift requirements as mentioned previously. They're even great for variable primary flow chilled water applications as they can operate at low flows in a three pass configuration. Furthermore, they have relatively low pressure drops, which save building owners on pumping costs, and they have various levels of water side and ambient corrosion and erosion protection. For example, basic condensed water applications may use simple epoxy coatings coupled with sacrificial anodes where more extreme fluid applications may use high-build ceramic coatings and an alternate tube material, such as titanium. There are no regular maintenance requirements with flooded heat exchangers. However, keeping heat exchanger tubes clean through brushing is critical to maintaining maximum heat exchanger performance. This is typically more of a concern with open condenser loops versus evaporator or heat recovery applications, However, the same possibilities of construction debris or eroding pipes exist, as mentioned with the brace plate design. Now, knowing when to brush tubes will depend on several factors, like hours of operation and water quality, but what many building owners have found valuable is for Johnson Controls to remotely monitor a key metric captured and trended by the chillers out-of-view panel, 
called the small temperature difference. This value is a key indicator for tube fouling and can be used to flag when chiller tubes should be cleaned by either the owner or the Johnson Control service team. Next, we have our patented hybrid falling film design. This heat exchanger is specifically designed for evaporating duty and is used with several air-cooled and water-cooled York chillers. You'll notice it has the same advantages of the flooded design, plus the bonus of reduced refrigerant charge, which can be up to 30% with some applications, meaning this design requires less refrigerant to match the efficiency of a flooded design. So how does it work? Well, first it should be noted that the falling film design evolved from the flooded design to support specific customer needs of a reduced environmental impact through high efficiency and reduced refrigerant charges. As shown, our hybrid design has two tube bundles. The upper bundle is uniformly covered by a film of liquid refrigerant falling from above, and the lower bundle is flooded in refrigerant that did not evaporate on the tubes above. Or as we like to say, some tubes are in the bath and some are in the shower. This is a very efficient way to transfer heat. Then the evaporated refrigerant gas passes through suction baffles on its way to the compressor. As with flooded evaporators, there is no regular maintenance, but again, the small temperature difference should be monitored, and most customers tend to go ahead and brush the evaporator tubes when the condenser tubes are being cleaned. Lastly, we have direct expansion, or DX heat exchangers, which are used for evaporator duty with air-cooled heat pumps and smaller water-cooled scroll chillers. These are visually similar to flooded or hybrid falling film designs, but there is a distinct difference which is that water floods the evaporator shell and refrigerant flows through the tubes. These designs are commonly used in chillers where equipment first cost, refrigerant charge, simplicity, and size are primary customer purchasing factors. Again, it's all about balancing customer priorities, and this design addresses specific customer needs just like each of the other heat exchanger types reviewed. High performance environments for life.